Hello, Roam Mithril here once again, getting back to the Legend of Zelda Second Quest 100% run. So today we're on our way to dungeon number 7. As long as we're here in the cemetery, we may as well take advantage of it one more time. See if we can get a good payoff going here. That's pretty nice. And with that, we're on our way. So I don't have any major purchases that I need to make this time, but there is something that I want to stop off to get on the way to the next dungeon. It won't take us too far out of our way, and you probably already know what it actually is. But warping to this entrance, that gets us pretty close to where we need to go. So let's see, just gonna go ahead and switch to the boomerang, so I don't accidentally warp myself again. So yeah, the rupees that I have right now, I kind of need to hang on to them. And as usual, the more I have, the better. So the more of those, yeah, the happier we'll be. More of those, please. Wow, fairy convention. So we're going to follow along the shoreline here. And it won't take us too long to get where we're going. Oh, come on. Shooting gallery, Octorok. Spitting is a terrible habit, and you should be ashamed of yourself. We're almost there. There we go. With that, we have all the heart containers from the overworld. We still have two hearts to collect, but they're both from dungeons. So we're just going to head over this way into the woods. We're getting close to the next dungeon entrance already. They actually hit it fairly well. Oh, give me that. And you get up here. Psst. There we go. And you didn't even drop anything. You did, though. And I appreciate it. So the dungeon entrance is actually in this room. You have to burn a tree, and it's a rather awkward one, too. Due to the fact that the fire travels two spaces when you use it, you have to burn the entrance from this side. But you can only get in from the other side. Kind of a silly little quasi-puzzle, that. But well hidden, I have to give them credit for that. It's another of those things, I'm honestly not sure if there's anything that directly points you to needing to do that. But it's there. So it is what it is. And so we go in this way. And with that, we've reached the entrance to Dungeon 7. So, time for a quick refreshing pause, and back in a moment. And so it's time for dungeon number 7. 
This one isn't too terribly dangerous overall with this equipment. It is a bit on the convoluted side, though. So coming over here we get the compass, and we have a couple of zoles to deal with. That's nothing too major. We can push this block and it opens up a path. So coming in here, we have a room full of red bubbles with one block and locked doors, and that doesn't let us through. So, uh, yeah. That's what I mean about this dungeon being very convoluted. It has warps all over the place, some of which don't make sense, and for the purposes of our realtor's walkthrough of this dungeon, yeah, we're going to be backtracking quite a bit. So it's a dungeon that's more annoying than truly dangerous. No whiz robes here, just a bunch of dark nuts. And the magical sword just kind of shreds them. Only two hits to take out a blue dark nut, one for reds, and Paul's voice only takes uh, three shots. Technically, we could use the bow and arrows if we want, but uh, really, they're kind of a non-issue at this point. The bad thing about giving us the bow so late is we've got a sword that makes it to where I'd rather not waste the rupees. So the fun thing about a room like this, since Dark Nuts can't go teleporting all over the place, and they can't throw magic at you, you can just hide out on the gap here using the stepladder. You do kind of have to count on the Dark Nuts to cooperate in going where you want them to so you can stab them, but uh... It means you're completely and utterly safe. So that's pretty silly. Their interior design sense works against them. Have to be careful with feng shui. We just have white bubbles. They are getting rather in the way, but still I'll take them over the colored ones any day. Well, the red ones, at least. Blue ones I don't really care about, of course. So, with everyone gone, we push that block, and we have more stairs. And we have a room full of keys. We'll worry about you guys in a moment. We'll need to come back in there anyway. Well, that just trivialized this room. <laughs> Yay for well-timed clocks. And with that stroke of luck, it's time to get this dungeon's treasure, the Red Candle. The red candle is more than anything else just a convenience item. It does the exact same thing as the blue candle, except you can use it as many times as you want per room, rather than having to leave to use it again. You can only have two fires out at once, though. So yeah, convenience item, but a nice one all the same. So we need to defeat all these keys so we can get back out of here. I forget the exact layout of the dungeon, but I know we're going to need the candle again soon. That's why I'm just going ahead and hanging on to that. Instead of switching back to the boomerang, uh, but now I'm going to want bombs. Hi there, manhandler. Technically, you can use the magical sword to defeat each prong of it in one hit, but as unpredictable as it is, I'd rather just try and one-shot it. It starts moving so fast that, honestly, trying to line up a stab is kind of a thing. Now we need the candle again. And so again we have a safe spot on the gaps. 
rupees that I want. So, yeah, it's kind of silly being able to do that, but hey, I'll take it. And again. And so we get the map. And this dungeon is plain and simple, a spiral. Though it does kind of go all over the place due to warp paths and everything. So no gap we can hide in this time, so we actually do have to put in a little bit of effort here. Slow down! So yeah, the spitting statues and the sheer number of dark nuts, it can be a bit of a problem sometimes. But the equipment we have, it still is a lot easier and a lot less terrifying than running into a room like this on a minimalist run. Someone over on my Tumblr actually asked me which run I felt was more difficult. Just a second quest run like this, or first quest minimalist. And though the first quest by itself is easier, uh, just the equipment you limit yourself to on a minimalist run, only having three hearts, uh, only having the basic armor, no rings, and only having the wooden sword, a room like this is just utterly terrifying, because basically every hit counts. I forget if, in fact, a blue dark nut at that level can one-shot you. I think they actually only do two uh, hearts worth of damage, meaning you can survive one hit, but not another. But it all definitely counts, and you have to put in a lot more effort to even take down one of them. So I mostly end up eating through my bomb supply doing that. Where is this? Yes, it's more crowded, but I can take things a bit more casually. So definitely, first run minimalist was harder. And we won't even talk about dealing with Ganon in those circumstances. So we have Goma again. I actually had somebody in the comments say that sword beams work on Goma, but just proof of concept if we can get a good shot in on him. Oh, he closed his eye too fast there. He doesn't want to cooperate here. Oh, darn you. Like, see, I very clearly hit the eye there, and it did nothing, so, no, I don't think sword beams work on Goma. They gave you the bow and arrow, they expect you to use them. Although sometimes, like I've said, the hit detection can be a bit iffy, but I've had areas like that where he was moving up and down so I could line up a very clear shot, and in test runs, it did nothing. So bow and arrow seems to be a necessity for Goma, I'm pretty sure. And we get another key. And we just push that out of the way. Down we go. And this is where things are going to get a bit on the annoying side for the purposes of the Realtors walk through, and wow, so much slowdown. That's the kind of thing there's no real excuse for, because that is just by default. There aren't any projectiles on the screen to worry about taking up extra processing power. That's just sheer enemy spam at its absolute worst. That really shouldn't have been done on the NES. That's kind of ridiculous. Just a little.
so you can push that block to get back out on the main path again. For the purposes of our Realtors walkthrough, we're gonna have to walk all over the place here, and a mugger. Yeah, we may as well get this out of the way. There's one corner of this area that's important that we need to go to, and so of course we're gonna be saving it for last, and that really seemed like it should've hit the last prong there. Come on, come over here. Yeah, that's what I mean that it can be annoying to line up a good hit, especially on the last part of Manhandler. But we got some rupees for our efforts. Alright, so now let's come up here. Rude! Yes, another mugger. If you want to go back, you have to pay him off. Going to the left leads to a trap room. Unfortunately, we're going to end up in that room anyway, just trying to look at everything. Because, if you go over here, there's no way back, and we really need to be in that area. So, this dungeon, like I said, is highly annoying if you want to show everything off. Because if you push this block, all it does is it opens a pathway. So, you can't go back where you really want to go. Meaning we're going to be rep repeating at least part of the dungeon. Basically, the trap room I'm talking about is the one that we saw at the very beginning of this dungeon, where you just end up in a room with a bunch of red bubbles, locked doors, and a block that only opens a path that leads back to the room right next to the entrance. We'll save ourselves at least a little bit of time by not using that path. They're being very cooperative about dropping fairies. I'm not sure why, but I will accept it. So, yeah, that's all there was over there. If we go up from here, or if we'd gone left from that upper mugger, we'd end up in the red bubble trap room. So, instead, we're gonna go this way. We're still gonna have to backtrack a good bit, but at least less. It takes us to the room that had the first manhandler in it. There's no way to go back, though, not that you'd really want to. So, we remember the layout of these rooms. We don't really need to switch the candle. Thankfully, the bubbles being present, it actually keeps enemies from respawning. But we will have to deal with these guys again. It is possible to keep enemies from respawning if you leave at least one alive in the room, but since you had to destroy them all to even open the door to get out, that wasn't an option here. Yeah, it was in later rooms, I guess, but, uh... It's still no biggie. Besides, we're a hundred rupees down after those muggers. So hey, if they want to drop anything to make up for that, I'm pretty welcoming of that. Another fairy. Anyone keeping track of how many of those have shown up in this episode? Because it's been a pretty ridiculous number. Well, you were being aggressive. Goma thankfully does not respawn. And so we get back in here. And we can finally move on. Back into the room of Super Slogo. I mean, I know they had limited hardware, and they worked with what they had. 
But you have to imagine that they place te uh, they play tested this, and nobody thought, huh? Maybe we shouldn't do this. It's not too detracting, but it's just very noticeable. Okay, so we're gonna head to the right. And we're gonna take the one corner that we did not visit. Down we go. Just kind of cornering me here. Silly gaming memory of my family when we first had the NES and we were playing this game. My family somehow interpreted Dark Nuts as cats holding serving trays, and so they became known as the TV Tray Cats. So with that, we're actually making real progress in the dungeon. Just to make sure I've visited everything thus far, looks like it. Uh, just had to get hit with a red bubble. Just to make the room a little less crowded, we'll take out the red dark nuts first. They're just kind of everywhere. Scrubbing bubbles! And one more of these sorts of rooms. get some bombs, and time to move on to the actual dungeon boss. It's Gliok. At full four-headed strength. How the second quest missed giving us a more ridiculous Gliok, I'll never know. I'll just be thankful for that. But with the magical sword, no real issue. So we get another heart container. And Triforce piece number seven. So there we go. Tedious, but not really too bad. Bloody expensive, though. Thankfully, I think those are the last of the muggers. Let's go ahead and clear out this room. And so with that, that's where we're going to call it for now. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you're enjoying the series so far, and I shall see you again next time. Until then, fare thee well.